They may usually be comfortable on camera, but just like the much indicted former president, these actors, athletes, rappers, real housewives couldn't help but serve unfiltered attitude and more than a dash of wrath in their official mugshots. Tropic Thunder star Nick Nolte posed for one of the most viral celebrity mugshots on September 11, 2002. In a scene straight out of one of his action films, Nolte had been flying down the scenic Pacific Coast Highway, which is known for its serpentine twists and narrow lanes. Because he was failing to stay in his own lane, a number of concerned motorists called the police. In his memoir, which is aptly titled Rebel, My Life Outside the Lines, Nolte blames the illegal drug GHB for his erratic driving. But we're guessing a strong coastal wind and an open car window was responsible for his hair, which looked as though the star had rinsed it in the tide before his ill-fated joyride. In his mugshot, Nolte gives the camera a fierce frown, and the shadows around his eyes intensify his menacing aura. But from the neck down, he appears ready to party. He's sporting a shirt with a colorful tropical pattern. Somehow, the contrast between his expression and his attire makes his mugshot even more unnerving. Nolte lamented, In 1992, People magazine had named me the sexiest man alive, and now, ten years later, I look to all the world like a madman. The smoking gun helped spread the internet legend that Cheers actor Woody Harrelson was arrested for a very Woody Harrelson reason in 1982, dancing in the street and fleeing when some Columbus, Ohio cops tried to put an end to his performance. In his mugshot, Harrelson doesn't look like the happy-go-lucky dude you imagine. His jaw is clenched, his stare is stone cold, and he's frowning ever so slightly. If looks could kill, let's just say that he would look like a natural-born killer if he weren't wearing a preppy polo shirt. And Harrelson had good reason to be pissed off. Speaking to The Hollywood Reporter, he explained what really went down, saying, A cop stopped us for jaywalking and he was really rough. When Harrelson didn't produce his ID fast enough, the cop repeatedly shoved him against a wall, so the actor made a run for it. After being apprehended by other equally violent officers, Harrelson tried to flee from the police van, this time in handcuffs. He explained, I see this car and I hit it and it flipped me up in the air. I spun completely forward, landed on the back of my head, and then they had me and maced the shit out of me. Luckily, he wasn't seriously injured. Here comes Honey Boo Boo star June Shannon, aka Mama June, looked all shook up after her 2019 arrest on drug charges. She and her beau at the time, Eugene Edward Gino Doak, were booked by the Macon County Sheriff's Office in Alabama and charged with possession of crack cocaine and drug paraphernalia. In her mugshot, Shannon kept her eyes downcast but curled her lip in an Elvis Presley-like snarl. She'd been spending like she had the King's bank account when it came to her drug use, telling Access that she and Doak blew through around $900,000 over the course of a year, revealing, so much money was sent to our dope man. So when you went to rehab, you literally had a dollar seventy-five. Yes. Name. Yes. Shannon pleaded not guilty to the felony charges against her and avoided prison time. Instead, she had to perform 100 hours of community service and take drug tests to prove she was staying sober. She checked into rehab, dumped Doke, and later married mechanic Justin Stroud. When she spoke to the Daily Mail in 2023, Shannon was three years sober and still sore over all that dough she spent to feed her addiction, saying, I think about a lot of things I could do with that money. My husband tells me all the time that I can't dwell on it. When Tiger Woods took a cocktail of prescription drugs in an ill-advised attempt at pain management in 2017, the five-time Masters winner found himself making headlines for a reason that had nothing to do with his prowess on the putting green. And soon, the press had a juicy mugshot to pair with its stories about Woods' latest vehicular incident. Woods had recently undergone back surgery when Jupiter, Florida police arrested him on suspicion of driving under the influence. They found his Mercedes stopped on the road, with Woods asleep in the driver's seat. In dashcam footage shared by NBC News, a confused Woods seemed to believe he was in California. He later explained in a statement, what happened was an unexpected reaction to prescribed medications. I didn't realize the mix of medications had affected me so strongly. The drugs found in his system included THC, two different painkillers, sleep and anxiety medications. After pleading guilty to reckless driving, Woods received a year's probation. In his mugshot, Woods has the eyes of a tiger. He's staring dead straight at the camera with a stony expression. 
But during his booking, he joked about the state of his pate when he had to describe the colour of his hair, quipping, we'll say brown and fading. Those clocks around Flavor Flaves' neck might help him ensure he's always on time, but he's learned the hard way that you shouldn't speed to get where you're going. The hitmaker might as well turn his speedometers into medallions for his collection of chains, because he doesn't seem to use them when he's driving. True, he had a legit reason for putting the pedal to the metal in 2014 when he was stopped for ignoring the speed limit. He was on his way to his mother's funeral, but that didn't explain the 16 suspensions on his license. Despite the circumstances, Flav managed to smile in that mugshot. However, he looked like he was thinking about his worst enemy when, in 2015, a trooper caught him going 32 miles over the speed limit. On top of that, Flaves' driver's license and registration were both suspended, and he had marijuana and alcohol in the car. So, perhaps he's pursing his lips in annoyance in his mugshot because he's thinking about how tough it'll be to avoid hard time. Drugs, them shits is real easy to get on, and they're hard as hell to get off. He ultimately caught a bit of a break, however, when he pleaded no contest to a single charge of driving under the influence and was handed a suspended jail term of 30 days. If you land a coveted spot on The Real Housewives of New York City, it pays to generate drama, even if you have to behave badly to do so. But some of Jules Weinstein's worst behavior happened after her 2016 exit from the series. She quit the show after just one season because she didn't want her ugly divorce from Michael Weinstein to play out in front of the Bravo cameras. It was also her contentious relationship with her ex that earned her a spot in the mugshot hall of shame. The Weinsteins' battle raged on into early 2020 and took a turn for the worse when Michael called the cops on Jules. According to a police report obtained by Radar, the exes were performing a child custody exchange in Boca Raton, Florida, when Michael started filming Jules. The report reads, According to Michael, Julianne punched him in the face, which caused him to drop his cell phone. Jules admitted to hitting her ex when questioned by police, but later pleaded not guilty to a domestic battery charge. She confessed to being angry when she allegedly attacked Michael, and it's written all over her frigid features in her mugshot. She looks like she's ready for war. In 2012, an intoxicated Randy Travis crashed his vehicle near the town of Tioga, Texas, then laid down naked in the middle of the road. In dashcam footage of the country star's arrest released in 2017, he can be heard saying to the state trooper transporting him to the Grayson County Jail, saying, I pray to God that he will have a cancerous growth that it affects his bones and every part of his body. Travis's face is bruised and scratched in his mugshot, and his dark glower makes it easy to imagine he was thinking similar thoughts when the photo was taken. Travis also verbally threatened the lives of the troopers who arrived at the scene of the crash. However, a retaliation charge against him was dropped when he accepted a plea deal. Travis was released on bond Wednesday, leaving jail barefoot in just a paper suit. For his DWI charge, Travis received two years probation and had to complete a stint in rehab. When the dashcam footage was released, the singer's rep released a statement reading, Randy Travis is well known to be a loving, caring person who is respectful of everyone. A video that shows anything otherwise only underscores that he was absolutely not himself. Willie Nelson isn't your typical outlaw country rebel. While many of his contemporaries love to sing about boozing, the singer's fondness for a certain green plant has become the stuff of legends. Nelson has been arrested for marijuana possession five times, so clearly, getting busted and booked hasn't deterred him from sparking up. His first arrest happened in Dallas in 1974. Details about it are scarce, but the mugshot appears on tons of merchandise online, including a Free Willy t-shirt, like the one featured in Grace and Frankie. Will you just get dressed? I am dressed. Nelson looks scruffy and grizzled, sporting a dark beard and unkempt hair that hasn't yet grown long enough to braid into those immaculate silver pigtails. He's also serving some serious stink eye, and something about his expression brings to mind a wanted poster from the Old West. 50 Cent's Hip Hop Ascent began with the 1999 song How to Rob, but it was selling that got the rapper, whose real name is Curtis James Jackson III, arrested in 1994. 
In his memoir, From Pieces to Wait, Once Upon a Time in Southside, Queens, Jackson recalls how the police busted down the door of his Queen's apartment and discovered his large stash of heroin and crack cocaine. He hadn't yet launched his hip-hop career, so he had no idea that his mugshot would someday appear alongside those of Snoop Dogg, Tupac Shakur, and Biggie Smalls on the Dogfather's Instagram page. But 50's piercing gaze made him look so intimidating, we're surprised he didn't use the photo for an early album cover. It would have been one way to show the industry he was a force to be reckoned with. When he was arrested, 19-year-old Jackson had been dealing drugs since age 12, but because he was still young and lacked a long rap sheet, he was able to avoid jail time by participating in New York's shock incarceration program. While it wasn't prison, the boot camp-like program was no cakewalk. Jackson writes in his memoir, The instructors knew nothing but discipline and pain, and they had a captive audience to experiment with. After completing the program, he went back to dealing drugs, until he decided he'd rather be a rapper. In 2009, late Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright and actor Sam Shepard got pulled over for speeding in normal Illinois. A breathalyzer test found that his blood alcohol content was double the legal limit. Shepard's eyes are bloodshot in his mugshot, and he's giving the camera a look like it's the one that's in serious trouble. Shepard allegedly tried to leave the parking lot, but couldn't because the parking brake was on. Shepard apologized for his actions during his sentencing hearing and admitted that he found his mugshot humiliating. He was set to pay fines and ordered to perform 100 hours of community service. Shepard vowed to never get behind the wheel drunk again, and the following year, he spoke to The Guardian about his sobriety, saying, Prior to that, I was sober for four years, and then I relapsed. It's a constant struggle. It's such a knucklehead disease because you refuse to see it. I think I have that sort of thing in my blood, in my psyche. I can become addicted very easily. It's trendy to have photo booths at bachelorette parties, but after celebrating the end of a friend's single days in 2018, the Bachelor star Amanda Stanton left Las Vegas with a different memento, a mugshot. In it, her jaw is set and she's shooting daggers at the camera. Her rep, Steve Honig, said that she'd been arrested on a domestic violence charge after hotel security was called on her and her then-boyfriend, Bobby Jacobs. Honig explained in a statement, That evening, she had a few drinks at a bachelorette party and when hotel security asked her and Bobby to quiet down, she got a bit rambunctious. Amanda gave Bobby what she thought was a playful shove. Hotel security did their job and reported the incident to the police. But Radar obtained a report from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department that told a different story. Jacobs told officers that Stanton had started hitting, pinching and scratching him during an argument. She also allegedly struck him with their hotel room's landline phone. Jacobs said that he turned to some of Stanton's friends for help calming her down, and they called security when they noticed a number of abrasions on his body. The charges against Stanton were dismissed, and she and Jacobs split the following year. In her memoir, Now Accepting Roses, Stanton writes, To this day, I'm still devastated and confused by what happened that night. In 2018, Ty Dolla Sign, whose name is Tyrone William Griffin Jr., was prepping for a performance in Atlanta when the vehicle he was in got pulled over. Instead of taking the stage, the singer found himself getting booked at the Fulton County Jail. Police found cocaine and marijuana inside the vehicle and charged Griffin with possession of both, as well as obstructing an officer. So, he had a lot to be ticked off about when his mugshot was being taken. Not only was he forced to miss a concert while touring with g Easy and Lil Uzi Vert, he was also looking at serious jail time. The icy stare he's giving the camera in his booking photo is enough to make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Griffin's attorney argued that the charges against his client were unjust because there were other occupants inside the vehicle and they all escaped charges. When Griffin was indicted, he was facing the possibility of a 15-year prison sentence. Instead, he was required to enroll in a drug prevention program and remain drug-free. Despite her diminutive size, Lil' Kim has always come off as someone you wouldn't want to cross. And in her 1996 mugshot, Queen B looks like she's about ready to sting somebody. The rapper, whose real name is Kimberly Denise Jones, explained to Vibe that she had a good reason for being annoyed about her arrest. She was at the Teaneck, New Jersey, home of her music mentor and lover Christopher Biggie Smalls Wallace, when police barged in. Inside, cops found the marijuana and a number of illegal weapons. Jones was charged with possession of marijuana, but said, 
I wasn't even smoking. I was upstairs all day sleeping when 5-0 shoved guns and a flashlight in my face. Jones never showed up for court, so an arrest warrant was issued. But one Teaneck detective explained, it wasn't on the top of our priority list. Sure, Blue Blood star Donnie Wahlberg can fire grill a mean Wahlberger nowadays, but he wasn't always the safest guy to have around a flame. In 1991, when he was part of the New Kids on the Block, Wahlberg evidently wanted a taste of the rock star lifestyle. But instead of trashing his hotel room, he allegedly started a fire in a hotel hallway. He was on the ninth floor of Louisville historic Sealback Hotel when he reportedly doused the carpet with vodka and lit it on fire. Wahlberg was arrested for first-degree arson, and the stunt could have landed the bad boy behind bars for up to 20 years. But in his mugshot, Wahlberg looks more angry and defiant than concerned as he glares at the camera. What's going on? Are you guys uh, turning into monsters? All these incidents that you're hearing about, it's, it's not nothing new. I mean, growing up, I had fights all the time. Wahlberg was given an out. He agreed to film a few PSAs about the perils of playing with fire and other dangerous behavior. After he completed the TV spots, the charges against him were dropped. However, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Graymig of the Louisville Fire Department didn't think that Wahlberg had the right stuff when it came to teaching kids that setting fire to buildings is wrong, saying, Our opinion is that Wahlberg met the letter of his requirement, but he certainly didn't meet the spirit of it. Former professional wrestler Larry Foll, who performed under the name Lex Luger, once used a signature move called the torture rack to take out his opponents, so it's no surprise that he looks absolutely terrifying in the two mugshots he had taken in 2003. The first was the result of Foll allegedly hitting his then-girlfriend, Elizabeth Hewlett, known to fans as Miss Elizabeth. Hewlett told police the bruises on her face came from falling while walking their dogs but Foll was slapped with a domestic violence charge anyway. When Foll's second mugshot was taken a month later, Hewlett was dead. She'd taken a lethal combination of pills after drinking vodka. Upon searching the couple's Atlanta residence, police discovered dozens of bottles of illegal pills belonging to Foll, and he was arrested on 13 felony charges for controlled substances. So, yeah, he had a good reason to look angry in that second mugshot. Instead of mourning Hewlett in peace, he was dealing with the police. However, years later, a regretful and sober foal would admit that Hewlett's death was a consequence of his behavior, telling ESPN, I take a lot of responsibility for that, my influence in her life. Her little heart and body couldn't take what I was doing. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.